The Singapore Air Force uh, Chief, the German Air Force Chief, and the Royal Air Force Chief. Okay. okay. And uh, so it was a privilege and an honor to have flown with them. And uh, they were very nice. And you can make out that, you know, when you are, I mean, you are a pilot through and through, you know, you've been had a long experience. Those people at that age as a chief were flying so well. An unknown aeroplane, they'd never flown it before. Sir. But uh, they were so comfortable in uh, in flying the aeroplane. Then you realize that, then you acknowledge and you say, Sir, <laughs> I mean, wonderful to see th your experience and your skill actually okay. showing in, uh, in the cockpit. So you must have felt really happy for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, sir, okay, uh, out of your uh, experience in service, so uh, what are your great learnings from our Indian Air Force, sir? As a fighter pilot, well, as a op senior officer. Well, frankly speaking, I think uh, among the three services, I think it's the best. It's the best for, you know, many reasons. And I'll tell you one simple one. Because uh, when we were in staff college in Wellington, Sir. doing the, the course, and after the course, I was an instructor there. So when I was an instructor for two years, what happens at the end of the course, in the last uh, one week, the DPO from Air Headquarters would come with the posting orders for all the officers. Sir. Going to various squadrons here, there, everywhere. And there would be this air wing, uh, air wing cocktail. So the Air Force officers, 70 odd we had on the course, they would be there with the wives. And the postings would be read out one by one of okay. each person. As to where they're going, uh, when the course finishes in one week's time, where they, are, they will be posted. And there used to be, you know... People who are very happy, some people who are very sad. Like I think all of all of you have felt <laughs> that. Are yeah, yeah. Ko kahan posting? Kahan oh, posting hota hota hai, normally, yes, yes, we feel that way. Yeah. And then you put in applications to say that please, you know, reconsider. Or <laughs> <somewhere else. laughs> okay, okay. So anyhow, so during that cocktail, Sir. both the years, both the years that I was there as an instructor, I used to go around to all the ladies, student officers' wives, Sir. one by one, and speak to them. And I would ask them the same question that you have lived for one year outside the Air Force environment. The staff college is run by the Army. Yes, sir. You have Army officers doing the course. You have Naval officers doing the course. You have Indian mix up uh, all. Foreign Service, Indian Administrative Service. You, ha you have the police. You have foreigners from different countries, from the Army, Navy, Air Force, everyone. It's a huge mix. What rank that the training is important, sir? As a major, as a squad leader. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, and I said, you have met, you have interacted, and you have spoken to the ladies of those services, and you've spoken to the officers of those services, and understood the ethos, the culture, yes, uh, the way you interact and talk with each other. And I said, today you tell me, have you married into the correct service? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so what, what would be the replacement? I, I never got a no, no for an answer. They all <laughs> said we married the right service. We <laughs> Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Air Force is the best. And they were very frank. And I gave them the option. I said, you're free to say what you want. Because, because there's some of us, like my wife, is from an army background. Achha, okay. Yes. And there are a lot of people like that. Who, whose spouses are from different services. Different, different sister services. Different back, backgrounds. Sir. Their parents' uh, father could be from the foreign service or administrative service. And uh, so their background is that. But having married, I used to ask them, have you married into the right service? And they all said yes. <laughs> okay. They all said yes. Great. So, so that, that is why I am giving the ladies' perspective. Sir. And they all felt for a reason. There's a reason because we have a culture. We have, like, you know, this interaction that we are doing today. I spoke to some of my army friends and all that. They sir. don't. They don't have. They're not doing all this. They do this at a. Their a level of interaction is, is different. It's not the same. Uh, for us, it's. I'm comfortable with you. You're comfortable with me. Uh, this is the way we have lived in our service. So we yeah, yeah. we we have been taught in our in our MCFs. We always taught by uh, by the sergeants and the warrant officers. 
and we would sit with the uh, technicians in the hangars and learn from them so it's a culture and i think we have a great culture yeah really sir we do have the great culture and, and because of that culture only now what we are today is because of that culture those ethos and that that kind of grooming that air force gave us really great yes. sir so yes. some of the people as i have mentioned some of the people have reached up the level of vice chancellor of university or uh, additional director general police uh, now uh, presently serving a two people are there one mr jayraman from west bengal another one by mr venkatraman from chennai also so having served in air force and groomed by the air force they achieved so much excellence in civil side also wonderful so it's really get up some of them has become a high court judge even sir that's the uh, so greatness of our air force so okay so then what would be your message if you have to give a message out of your experience air force to all our air veterans on the call what would be your message to us sir before that sir now uh, that sir uh, it's a wonderful narration by sumi sir and, uh, he had underscored the social life of the air force yes sir without that the air force will not be able to work and uh, with that may i beg your leave to go off the air <laughs> thank you so uh, much sir thank, thank you, you so thank much thank you sir hero of our langol battle sir jai hind jai hind sir okay thank you sir nice where are you settled in gurgaon sir in gurgaon okay very good place carry yeah, on thank you sir thank you dash sir in fact uh, our yeah. group captain das sir has been a regular uh, participant of this program and we, we are able to continue because of the blessings from the people like him sir another great hero of our 71 war das sir thank you sir thank you so much for your regular uh, participation thank you goen yeah. sir also join he must yeah. have uh, yeah yeah goen yes sir welcome sir goen sir welcome thank you So well, yeah for uh, you can continue i would like uh, sir the last question what would be your message to our air warriors son call out of learnings from the indian air force you know you asking me a such a difficult question <laughs> 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 but we look forward to your guidance and uh, i mean your uh, lessons so that uh, they, we we get inspired by your lessons our message no, I, I, i would feel awkward for the simple reason that there are so many of you who are <laughs> have, are el- elder to me and have have a senior in service as far as i'm concerned and uh, for me to give any sort of a message or advice is not right or is it won't be uh, in the correct sense of the thing but what i would like to say is let's preserve yeah. our, let's preserve our culture and heritage let us not you know everything is becoming very materialistic today in yes, life sir. and and we find that you know we have lost that touch like we we used to meet in the squadron gunnery meet time or during rampances the feelings that we had among us and the, you know the way we interacted uh, i think this human interaction between people is very important yes sir. and uh, we have had a good culture in the service for many years and we must not lose that lose that touch that touch of the interaction which will give you the best results because finally it is the man and the machine combination where there are some people working on the airplane some people who are flying the airplane this team has to produce the result the right result and with sophistication technology everything is online so you're losing the touch you're losing the physical touch with people because everything is online you tell them theek hai email kar dena or, <laughs> or okay. zoom zoom call kar dena zoom call pe ho jayega sir but i think we grew up you know meeting each other shaking hands all that i think that is very important and we should continue with that yes sir we have to air force has got a great culture great ethos so incredibly amazing bond is that we develop over a period of time be it men or officer that i think and the great part the best part of it is seeing the officers like you so we all men get inspired even during the service and we start looking for the base and means of achieving something great because of seeing you all in the air service so okay. that's how that is the power of association i believe so which ultimately transforms us to go for the bigger things in life otherwise uh, people like me only uh, coming from a village and uh, a kind of even still my classmates and neighborhood people are still working in the field so since i joined because i joined the air force and because i was able to associate with people like you and all the officers then we that, that transformed our life entirely in a different way so so right. salute to you sir and uh, hats off you. to your uh, greatness in service you. 
Sir, uh, since our uh, group and Goen sir also joined, sir, you may ask anything in continuation of our uh, previous call. I don't think there's anything else to ask. <laughs> I conducted this last thing and I couldn't get away for quite some time. You know. that, that, okay. And uh, only th- I think you wanted to st- talk a lot more, but uh, you were running short of time. That. And we were waiting for a question answer sessions. I, I only add to what Sumit. I just joined because I'm on a holiday in Kulu, <laughs> Manali. Okay. I know your, the cottage you're in, in is a very pretty cottage. <laughs> no, no, it's not a cottage. Somebody's <laughs> home. Yeah, we've been doing oh. Shiv Kunal Verma. Uh, that's he's a filmmaker, author, and yes. Yes. lots of yes. yes, yes, you're you're in his cottage. Uh, I'm his guest guest for some few days. <laughs> How nice! How nice! <laughs> and it's been a wonderful talking to him. You know, so many stories he to say. Anyway, sir. No, I, I just want to join and I saw you, I heard you about uh, uh, the relations between the men and officers, technicians and the pilots, sir, sir. which you maintain in the Air Force. I'm, you know, and somehow I must admit that until you all came up with this with this uh, organization called AVA <laughs> and I had had opportunity to contribute towards the, the same organization, I did not know, I was very frank that, you know, between the retired veterans of the men and, and the officers, there's so much closeness, so much of feeling and, and can be brought by just one organizer. That's because, that's because of the fact that we served in the same Air Force. Yes, sir. Yes, it's sir. amazing. It is just amazing. I mean, I didn't I didn't know this kind of feeling really existed. I'm pretty very frankly. And, and after all, you all have done so well, so well. Then, and uh, most of you have done so well in the post-retirement phase. And not many officers have achieved those kind of heights. But you remain the source, particularly fighter pilots remain the source of inspiration for all of us in Air Force, sir. It's a fact. Uh, yeah, yeah. The because, way you live, yeah. the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you conduct yourself, really after, amazing and inspiring. After all, we are a fighting force. So fighter pilots <laughs> probably are the, are the cream of the cream. Yes, and uh, Sumit has trained the cream of the cream. He was <laughs> one of the best fighter pilots, I think. Air Force is ever... Uh, yes, yes. So that's why we feel proud of uh, him, sir. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to join thank and uh, to be a part of you. Uh, and uh, thank, you, sir. thank you, sir. You are a great contributor towards our success. <laughs> we are honored by thank your you, Dave. in the group, sir. <laughs> thank you so much. And, and Deb, I must congratulate you on this latest uh, painting of yours of the an 12s Outstanding. Sir. Absolutely outstanding. I'm very glad Still. that uh, through my paintings, I'm not only able to bring out uh, the Air Force history, but some of the very um, unsung heroes. Nobody knew that the AM-12 carried out bombings. Nobody knew that first shot of the Air, or Air Force uh, 1071 war was fired by, from the otter. Oh, okay. yeah. And then I'm trying to bring out now the role played by the caribou. Caribou, yeah. these were aircraft used for bombing. So, the sheer gravity they dropped the bombs. <laughs> and... Uh, Amazing this story. And these all operated in the war without any fighter escort, without any fighter cover. You know, big hull cake of main 12 going all across. Some guts, some well. And I think, and of course, helicopters like me, me, me Force doing that SHBO. And these are things people with guts and glory. And, and I'm so great. I'm so glad that I'm able to bring them out into the open public. They've been talked about now. And in fact, uh, you know, uh, the whole thing, as I said, is a combination because uh, over periods of time, and I was speaking at the Jumbo Majumdar annual international conference or seminar recently, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it started from there when when Jumbo Majumdar decided to fly that first bombing bombing mission in Second World War. He They modified it overnight. They modified an aeroplane which was not designed to carry bombs. It was just a reconnaissance aeroplane. They modified it. The technicians, the technical officers, the technicians and everybody worked whole night. And he did the recce one day. He came back and he said, this is what has to be done. They worked on it at night. And next morning at 6 o'clock, he flew the mission with the bombs. Now that is capability. That is technical capability. And over the years, whether it was in the 71 war, the modifications and every war, Cargill time, you know, we have done modifications on aeroplanes, uh, which were not there by the designer and the Russians and the Brits and whoever has been, you know, they've been so surprised that we came up with 
certain modifications and they worked and they gave results yeah it speaks innovation sort of things we are done on yeah, lots of lots of innovation yeah yeah many so, yes sir a, a participant would like to ask anything yeah sir uh, one question if you don't mind had you any occasion to fly after leaving the air force no unfortunately <laughs> because few pilots have flown after retirement also one example yes. i know is air marshal masan sir i think he has flown mig yes. 31 So you are the actually cream of uh, mix series. So I thought uh, you might have done that. You might have had that honor also. No, I wish I could have, but I, I've never had the option. You may have again, sir. You are <laughs> never too old. Hopefully, sir. Thank you very much for excellent two sessions giving to us. You have given us and thank spared you. a valuable time. And I wish you wonderful holidays. I understand next month you are going abroad. So no, next week. Ah, let's see. right from beginning end of the march you told so before that you have spared your valuable time and given us such a nice uh, two sessions sir it's a uh, hats off to you and with you all the yeah. best in your career for yourself your family from all our groups sir thank you it's been a privilege and an honor for me to speak to all of you and be on this uh, forum and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity so one more question sir what about your children sir how they are settled one son he is in the us and okay. that is where we are we are going there now. oh great <laughs> okay i think we have uh, mr kc shaker also on the call sir would like to ask anything or share anything uh, with sir sumit sir i am like his bachcha acha <laughs> so yeah if you would like to share something with you on this call so otherwise uh, anybody uh, rajendra ji koi kuch puchna hai would like to ask anything actually it is a lot of learning technically being a non technician uh, as you have mentioned uh, the ai told sir my first shot in my first flying in the air force was n12 i was privileged and i have worked in the jamnagar base of room during 1974 that time i wanted to fly because uh, i am a non technician i have not touched even the aircraft <laughs> so when i was working in the air force they were uh, i been mean, uh, base of room the pilots used to come for uh, filing the program flight program that is for the bombing shooting and the uh, samut range so i requested one of the pilots sir i want to fly because <laughs> i am not at touch the aircraft i am not uh, experienced the flying so said to me he said okay you come in the evening 4 o'clock we are going for a, a night flying for bombing shooting so oh, that nice. was my very uh, remember shot is in my whole life where i have seen that uh, how the bomb is uh, just uh, placed in the tray and it was just to push and uh, drop it was a very great experience for me sir and uh, thank you very much for your uh, experience sir. sharing your experience that is a very thank valuable you. for us thank you sir thank you thank you yeah uh, anybody else sir uh, who would like to uh, share their experience with sir uh, hello sir yeah hello, uh, sir. yes sir shekhar shekhar yes, here yes sir welcome sir. can I, can i ask you a question please sir Yeah, this is uh, not about our MiG-25, but uh, was there in, any interceptor version of the aeroplane also? Yes, sir. It started as an interceptor. Okay. The MiG-25A. This was the MiG-25. What we had was the MiG-25R. Okay. The MiG-25 series started as the as the uh, MiG-25A, which was the interceptor version, and it was designed to shoot down the U-2. Okay. Okay. the the u2 and the sr71 thereafter that's right In, initially the u2 they couldn't shoot down but it was finally the gary powers were shot down by a mig 21 and by the sam2 i think one of i'm, I'm forgetting right now i think it was no actually uh, gary power was shot down by a ground to air missile sam2 as sam2 and also incidentally the sam2 shot at their own mig 99 also also right. so once the sr71 came in yeah. and they realized that they realized that uh, you couldn't catch that you, you know like the mig 25 last time i explained that you your transition through the higher reaches of the lobe the radar lobe is so rapid it's just about 2 seconds or 3 seconds from yes. the uh, far boundary as you call it to the near boundary of the missile yeah. that if you if your missile launch is not in time those if you don't hit that aircraft in those 2 3 seconds you don't hit the aircraft at all okay so it was it was virtually impossible to hit it which was the same with the sr71 so okay. they said 
will design the MiG-25 to shoot down in the air at those speeds, at those heights, we can have an aircraft and that is what the MiG-25 was all about. Okay. I, I believe we have heard this from uh, some of the Russians, but uh, there's no authentication that uh, they carried an air-to-air missile, which uh, we didn't, actually we didn't see the missiles. But like I mentioned last time, the wings on the, our airplanes still had those rails where the pylon for the missiles fit. Okay. So the in, even in the reconnaissance version, the wings were not clean. It had those rails. That's where you would fit the pylon for the missile. Okay. And uh, so the, uh, they had an air-to-air missile, which was also designed to look down, shoot down your low-level cruise missiles. Okay. Which are flying at 50 meters and 100 meters off the ground. Okay. So, so it had a great capability, the interceptor. It's still, uh, it was, uh, the MiG-31 has taken over from that now. The MiG-31 basically is the same aeroplane, upgraded at the engines and the airframe. The cockpit design has changed a little bit. And now you have two, uh, a tandem, two, uh, two pilots, but not like the MiG-25, one up, one down, which was a trainer. Here, the, the rear rear occupant is the WISO, what we call in the Su-30, the weapon, weapon systems officer. WSO is called the WISO. Okay. So the Sukhoi-30 also at the back has got, in, the, in fact, the Su squadrons have got navigators. Okay. And the navigators are WISOs. They are sitting okay. with this cable and the computer and in the rear cockpit of a fighter. And they are targeting the fighters. And because now with the technology on your radar screen, uh, you can see multiple targets and lock on to multiple targets and launch at multiple targets. So the, the weapon system, while the pilot is doing the maneuvering of the airplane, the weapon system officer gets the clearance from him and he actually focuses, locks on to the targets of necessity and launches the missiles from the rear. So Just one more question. There have been cases of some F-14 that have shot down a MiG-25 near Libya. I've heard this also. I okay. I really don't know the story. Okay. 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 I've, I've heard this. These aircraft have come down and for whatever reasons of... Uh, because what they used was also the... Uh, uh, mainly the intercept aircraft. Okay. Which, okay. which could come down also. And, and, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. They were not maneuverable. That's the problem. Okay. So if... Okay. if if there was somebody on their tail, this you can't get away from it. Okay, amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank You're you welcome. so much, sir, Mr. Casey Shaikh, sir, for uh, joining and uh, sharing some of your uh, thank things you. with him. And uh, anybody else, sir? It is so nice, sir, hearing your uh, experience, great experiences of uh, true airmanship in Indian Air Force. The way you handled or commanded that all the variants of MIG, uh, a big series. So it's really, uh, really inspiring and motivating one. And uh, definitely, so you are one of the great air warriors whom our Air Veterans Association respect and uh, salute you. to you, sir, and all your valor. Thank you very much. Thank you very so much. I, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged. A very so, privileged and honored. So wish you happy journey, sir. Bon voyage from our Air Veterans Association. And spend you time with much. your uh, uh, family members abroad. Have a happy, happy vacation there, sir. Thank you so Thank much. You we are honored for your presence and Thank inspired you. by your lecture.